Sí. Scala. Aleph Hay. Okay, Aleph Hay. Though they have said they do not seize collateral from women, slaves, or minors, nevertheless, if they contributed the half shekel, we accept it from them. However, if a Gentile or Kutian contributed, we do not accept it from them. Nor do we accept from them bird offerings of Zavim, Zavos, and women after childbirth, nor sin offerings and guilt offerings, though we accept vow offerings and gift offerings from them. This is the general rule. Whatever may be vowed or donated, we accept from them. Whatever may not be vowed or donated, we do not accept from them. And so it has been made clear by Ezra, as it is said, it is not for you and for us to build a house for our God. The following are obligated to pay a cabal. The Vim, the Israelim, proselytes, and emancipated, emancipated slaves, the not Kohanim, women, slaves, or minors. One who contributes to a, to a Kohen, woman, slave, or minor is exempt. If one contributed for himself or for his colleague, he is obligated for only one carbon. The mayor says two carbonists. One who gives a seller and takes back a shekel must pay two carbonists. One who contributes to a poor person, his neighbor or his town per, townsman is exempt from a carbon. But if he lent the half shekel to them, he is obligated to pay a carbon. Brothers who are partners, when they're obligated to pay a carbon, they are exempt from the animal type. But when they are obligated to give the animal type, they are exempt from the carbon. And how much is this carbon? A silver ma, the words of Ramea, but the comments say half a ma. Okay. Okay. All right, very close. Sarfin shekalim le darkon os mipnei masoi haderes. Okay, so a darkon is a, um, a, a larger denomination coin. It's, um, I think they, they, should, they were gold. Is that right? Let me just check. Um, a darkon is worth, is worth two seller. Yeah, it's a, they're gold coins. So basically what they wanted to do was to make it easier for the messengers. Remember, they, they're, collecting, they're collecting all the shikalim in the towns as well. So they don't want to have the, the messengers clipping these giant sacks of coins. Uh, so they, they're allowed to convert them into smaller denomination in gold, um, into, sorry, into, into larger denominations, that is. So that's less for them to carry. Okay. And says the, <coughs> says the Mishnah, just like they were a shofar, in this case, is, it's a collection chest, but it, it's shaped like a shofar because it's narrow at the top and wide at the bottom in order to make it easy to put things in and not so easy to get them out. Okay, um, so, they, so they had these, these shofarot um, in, in, the, in the towns, just like they did in the, in the Mekdash um, for, for, for collection. Um, and what, what, what does it mean? Um, in other words, they had um, multiple ones. Is that right? No, sorry, I haven't looked at that point yet. Okay, so Beneha Ir Shishilchu is Shiklehin, the Nignavu Osha Abdu. Now, what happens if the, the people in Beit Shemesh? gathered together all of the shikalim and gave it to the messengers. And the messengers went on the road towards Yerushalayim and either they had, they had an accident and they lost the money or they were, they were robbed and, uh, and the money got taken from them. So now whose achrayos is this money? And the answer is it depends on when it happened. In Nitrima Chuma, if the people, if the, the Kwanim in the Mikdash had already separated out money to be used for purchasing the communal offerings at the time of the of the loss. So now what happens is is that when the Kohanim pick up the first coins from the from what they've already got in the Mekdash, they have in mind to to include all the money that's already been collected around the around the country because they want everyone to have this course. Of, of contributing towards this, uh, towards this, and not just that, that they're using the money of whoever ha happens to be there already. So at that moment, this magical bolt of lightning goes around all around the country, and everything that is, uh, that is that, that's around the country is now in the property in the property of the of the of the Mekdash. So now, if it has happened that um, that they've already taken the chuma when the, when the money is stolen or lost, then who loses it? The Mekdash, because it already belongs to the Mekdash. 
so what happens to the, so the messengers now in order to prove that uh, to prove that they weren't negligent or um it may be that they're paid messengers who um who are claiming that they were robbed right because because a robbery is uh, they're, they're not liable for for an armed robbery and liable for losing it or for having it stolen off them while they weren't looking but they are like but they're but they're exempt if uh, if somebody actually you know came and robbed them okay nishbaina gives them so then the messengers will swear to the temple treasurers and then they get off the hook beam love however if the money had not yet been taken in the mikdash at the time of the last nishbaina bnei ha'ir now the money was still the property of the of the people in the city so the messengers have to come and take a shua to the people who gave them the money and then they're exempt bnei ha'ir shok in tahtehen and the Bnei area have to shake their heads and say, okay, we took a loss. Now we've got to give our tr- now we've got to give the, the Shkalim again. Interesting. Okay. Now what happens is they gave them they gave their money a they gave their money a second time. Um, and then the and and then the original money that they gave has been found. Or or the Ganavim said, you know what, we didn't realize this was the Shkalim from the temple. You know, we, we feel really bad about this, but here's the money back. Okay, Eilu ve'Eilu Shikalim. Then both of them are given to the to the Mikdash. Ve'Ein Olin Lahen Leshana Haba, and then they can't offset it and say, okay, well we don't need to give next year. You can't can't offset it. It all goes to the Mikdash. So as uh, we have a, a principle um, in a number of places that Yad Hektesh La Eliona, that's the we always give the advantage to the to the Mikdash in in any kind of financial transaction. Remember we had that. When people were selling uh, things to the mikdash, and it, uh, like if, if the if the um, if the price changed, the mikdash always gets it at the cheaper price, whether it's going up or going down. Um, okay. When they when would, would people actually go to the to the um, boxes that they put the tre- treasury money in at, at the um, uh, base of mikdash and steal from it? No, 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 no. That's not what they're saying. What they're saying is that they're is that they're, they're on the road. No, I understand that, but would people actually do that? Were they were they worried about that? That's why they made it that way, the boxes and the coins, so they wouldn't steal from it. Same. Now, um, I can't believe someone would be standing at the base of Migdash, you know, standing on temple grounds over there and steal from it. You know, I, it's hard hard to put. You know, you know, you say that, and I'm just gonna pause you. Uh-huh. All right, so Mishnah base. Um, so what does he do? I make a mistake. So he, uh, so Reuven gives, uh, says, says, to, says to Shimon, he has my, he has my, my shekel. will you go and give it, give it uh, for me to the, to the Mekdash? So Shimon says, thanks very much. And he sticks it in his pocket. And, uh, and he goes over and he goes over and he, and he pulls out, uh, pulls out the coin and says, Oh yeah, I should give this. I should give this on my uh, for myself. So he gives. So he gives it for himself. And for, he forgot that he was doing it for, uh, for Ruvain. So he, so he makes his own contribution from Ruvain's coin. Okay. So now, the question that we have over here is: Has he committed meila? Has he used temple property for his own benefit? Okay. Even, though, he has, even though he hasn't given it yet. No, he's and so he, no, he's given. He he's, he has given it. That's the point. Uh, no, so so the, but but Reuven, Reuven, when Reuven gave him the coin, so that it doesn't it doesn't become temple property from the moment that, that Reuven gives it to him. But what happens is im nitrima truma. Remember the same thing that happens with the coin in the mikdash. As soon as they pick it up and say this is the, this is this is the money that we're spending now, it magically all around the country, all the shikalim become temple property. So in so in Shimon's pocket, Reuven's if if that had already happened, then inside Shimon's pocket, Reuven's coin has become temple property. So now if he's using it for himself, then he's committed me'ila. Why? So now why is he committing me'ila? It's not that it's not that he has uh, that paying it that, that that it's not a, um, that because he's done the mitzvah with it. You know, giving a chatzis shekel is uh, is a mitzvah, and a mitzvah is not considered a hana because it's a mitzvah is, a mitzvah is for a person's benefit, but it's not it's not considered a uh, that you're deriving that you're deriving benefit from it. Um, Elamai, what remember we we learned in the earlier Mishnah is that if a person fails to pay his um, his shekel, they'll come and take collateral from him. 
Right. So now the fact that he has given over the coin has exempted him from people coming and banging on his door to take collateral. So that's the benefit that, uh, that we're talking about over here. Okay, so if, so if the temple treasures it already now, now he's committed Me'ila, and what's, uh, what's, the, what's the difference that he's done Me'ila? Is that he has to bring a Korban Me'ila. And that is an Asham for, uh, for, for having committed Me'ila. And then he has to, of course, have to pay, he has to pay back the Karen and the, and the Chomish. Okay, so hashokel shiklo mi maos hektesh. Now, what happens if a person um, has set aside money for hektesh? He, he put it, he put aside money that he was going to that he was going to uh, that he that he dedicated to the mikdash and said this is for better like a bias, and uh, and he forgot about it and he took the, and he took a makatzis a shekel from there and and gave it on his own behalf. He gave gave it himself for the makatzis a shekel. In the Yisra Matruma, the Karva had the Hema. So if the 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 the, the Karim have taken the money and and they brought the Korban with the money from the from the Truma, well, then what's happened? He has he has committed Meila. Now, um, why has he committed Meila? Let's just let's just understand how, how what's the mechanism of a Kena. So I'm going to go into Kahati to uh, to understand this. Okay, so. For example, he had in his hand money that he had already dedicated to the Mikdash, and he forgot this and he thought it was Khulin, so he took his shekel from it. Okay. Um, and um, so why 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 is this um Jare Gam Khelkova Osa Bahama? Uh, hold, hold this thought. Something. Why is he committed? Why is he committed? Meila. No, I thought I'd, I thought I'd understood this, but I actually haven't. Um, Give us, a, can you give us the the astral explanation as to why this is why this is Meila? Because I'm I'm funny. I'm, I thought I'd understood, but I haven't. Um, okay. Which which where which, which where did you start that? that the start that, with, that, with with the one who takes it. He takes his shekel from from uh, sanctified money. Um. Okay. okay. So the beginning of that says it says one who gives his half shekel to his colleague to contribute for him, but the colleague. Himself, right? If the truma has already been withdrawn, is it misappropriated? That's the that, that we've dealt with. Now the next, the next part is where we need, we will need the payers. What? All right. Let me see. Uh, one contrib contrib contributes. Um, let me see. Um, I'm not sure if this is what is appropriated. It. One who gives us. No, that's the wrong place. Um, one who contributes his half shekel from consecrated funds. That's what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. It says, well, you, like as you said, as you said before, he forgot the money in his possession had previously been consecrated for use in purchasing supplies or paying for repairs, and now used it for half shekel, his obligation, thinking it was his own money. And it says, like you said, if the true for public offerings had already been withdrawn and an animal brought with its money, he already been and has already been, already been offered, it has misappropriated it. Subsequently, when the withdrawal is made and the animals bought with this money are sacrificed, he is liable to the laws of Me'ila. The sacrifice was performed on behalf of everyone who participated in the half shekel contribution, including this individual who had mistakenly contributed consecrated funds. His share in the communal sacrifice having been bought with money that had been originally been consecrated for a different sacred person constitutes an improper imper uh, misappropriation of such, ta of such, ta um, of such funds. And he is liable to the Ma'ila laws. The actual transgression of transgression of Ma'ila, however, is not committed until the sacrificial service is performed. The mere diversion of funds from their designated sacred, sacred purpose to another use, although forbidden, does fall within the category of Ma'ila. The Ma'ila process comes into play only if the diverted sacred, sacred assets are used for secular purposes. In our Mishnah, uh, as noted in the first clause, a secular benefit is involved because the donor has ostensibly fulfilled his half shekel obligation, thus freeing himself from the danger that the Beidim will seize his assets. 
in the first clause too, where someone used another person's half shekel as his own, the same rule applies only after the offering has been sacrificed. Are the penalties for transgression applicable? You want me to go on? That's okay. So the so the issue is you know, if uh, so the issue is that uh, that he has that he's contributed his uh, his shekel. So I think I think what what threw me was in Nitrima Truma with Karava Habahema because in the in the first in the first instance. The money in the first instance when he, when he had his friend's money in his pocket that money was just his friend's money until he contributed it or until the uh the, the gizbar took the, took the took the money and then magically in his pocket it became it became a hektesh funds in in our second case the hektesh was from the outset it was his own hektesh money that he had put aside and he forgot about it and, and, he, and, he, and he gave it as uh um, and he gave it as as machatis shekel so here it doesn't depend on the fact that the gizbar, um, whether he did it before or after the the gizbar took the took the funds. Right. In fact, um, it must it, it must have it happened. It must have become the hektesh. It, it it actually doesn't matter um, if he's if he contributes that if he contributes that money and uh, to the to, to the mikdash. And, it, and thereby exempts himself from having uh, from having his property uh, seized. So then he then he's received benefit from the from the hektesh uh, from his own hektesh. So it, so it doesn't so the timing over this one is not as relevant as in the first case in the mission. And that I think is what threw me is that uh, it sounded the mission sounded like the the timing was relevant. It says here though, however, as implied by the Mishnah, if the error was discovered prior to the sacrificial service, a Right, then, then, right, then he doesn't. So, so right, he discovers exactly. the error before the sacrificial service. Then he can say, "Whoops, I got the wrong one." Quickly, let me give you give you the chulin money. Then, uh, right. in that case, the sacrifice would not have been offered on behalf of the individual because he would have been known as a non-contributor, hence no prop, improper use of the consecrated funds. But the Rambam says, mm -hmm. apparently, different differentiates. Rambam apparently differentiates between the first passage of the Mishnah use. Of someone else to say shekel, where fraud, a, a, a fraudulent contribution per su, um, per subjects the transgression to ma'ila, and the second passage, inadvertent use of the consecrated half shekel, the sacrifice has to take place for ma'ila to be in, invoked. Right. That helps. Or did... Yeah, that helps. Okay. All right. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the idea is that um, is that if he. If he discovers, if he discovers his error before they before they've uh, brought the korban, right, and he runs after them and says, "Quickly, quickly, take my machatzis shekel, the real one," then he's then he's okay. Then he hasn't committed meila because uh, because now he's legit. And and the and the fact that his first machatzis shekel went in in the wrong place, nonetheless, he didn't get receive any benefit from it. Okay. If he takes his, if he takes his animal and, and and gives it all to be to be shechted, all right, but they haven't shechted it yet. And, and before they go to do the, the shkita, he comes running and says, wait, 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 I made a mistake. But they took it, right, with the, with the lakshava of the, they're going to use this for the korban. Yeah. Where does, where does that put him? Did this actually have to be shechted? Right. Just give, give me the case again. So he has, they, they take the, the animal and they're going to get ready to shech. Yeah. But hasn't, they haven't checked it yet. So, and he can fight for, wait, wait, stop everything, you know. <laughs> That's my money. <laughs> but because they've taken it with the makshaba that they're going to use this. Okay, but so, now that, so now that doesn't come into play in the second case because um, because the money, that the, the hektish money that we're concerned about is already hektish. Uh -huh. It didn't okay. require the, the gizbar to pick up the money to make it hektish as it did in the first case. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, All right, Mishnah Gimel. Ha methanes maos the Amar hare elu l'shikli. So he. Wait, wait, we didn't finish, but there's an important part I think talking here about Maaser Sheni. Oh, thank you, pardon. I skipped. I skipped that. Right, Maaser um, Sheni. Thank you. Thank you for catching that. Okay, well, okay. Me to be Maaser Sheni. What happens if a guy took Maaser Sheni money and and forgot? He thought it was chulin and he gave that as his as his machatzis a shekel. Or me to be shmi. So he had he had shmita money. How do you have some money? Is if he if he sold if he had he picked some from fruit, fruit legitimately and he had leftover and he sold it to his neighbor. So now that money is got for the shvius. Right. Okay. 
So now, and he forgot about it and he turned that into, and he turned that into Machatzik Shekel. Yochal Kenegdan. Then, as we saw in both of those cases, both, both Maser Shani and with Shvius, if you, if you accidentally spent it on anything, you know, if you, if you spent it on, uh, you know, buying a, buying a horse or uh, whatever, anything that you can't eat, then he's got to take, he's got to take full in money out of his own pocket to the same value and turn that into Shmita money or Maser Shani money and, uh, and, and that's where, and that's where it ends. So he just takes this money, this, this money, and says, "This is now shmita money." Or yes. Right. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. All right. Mr. Gimel. Um. Uh. Hamachanis mouse. So he, a guy is gathering his 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 change, and he, he says, "Well, he looks at this big big pile of copper coins and says, listen, 'Listen, I'm sure that in there is a machatzis a shekel between it.'" So he sticks his hand in, grabs grabs a fistful, and says, "Okay, this is going to be for my for my machatzis a shekel." All right, this is this is for my machatzis shekel. So it's probably more than machatzis shekel in there. What happens? So once he's once he's worked it all out and 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 uh, and, uh, and converted it into uh, into a silver coin, he's got change left over. What's the den of the change? nadaba. What the change must go to an nadaba. It, it 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 must be donated to the temple because he's already sanctified it and even. Remember, this is this goes back to an argument that we had um, before. Was it? I don't know if it was even before us, uh, where where machlok is based on based shamai um, as to kiddushet uh, tamas. If somebody at, makes a makes a mistaken declaration of 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 hekdesh, is it is it uh, is it hekdesh or is it not? Beis Shammai says it is hekdesh, and Beis Shammai says it's not. And we might remember the cases that we brought. Said um, the silver coin that I pull out of out of my pocket first will be will be hekdesh, and he pulls out a gold coin. So Beis Shammai said, "Too bad." He, he pulled out a coin, and he said it was hekdesh, and it, it's hekdesh. And Beis Shammai said, "No, it he said a silver coin, and it's not." So it, so, it, so it's nothing. So it's the same machlokis over here that we have between Beis Shammai and Beis Shammai. He he um, he thought this was a machatzis a shekel. It turned out to be more. So, but so Beis Shammai say, well, too bad. It's a, it must just be donated, okay? Well, Beis Shammai more sign chulin. The the change is completely full in. Um, she, um, well, okay. Did you hear that blast from the from the quarry now? Oh, that was the quarry. Yeah. Oh, wow. Anyway, Shavi may may end lishiki. However, if he's phrased it. He, he sticks his hands in and pulls out this coin, this handful of coins, and says, "I'll, I'll bring my shekel from this." Mm. Okay, and then even Beis Shammai agrees. Okay, that wording is uh, is fine because he's clearly stating that that the the shekel is somewhere in there, but not the whole thing. Okay, we're in agreement. Now, what happens if we if we shift our context and say we're talking about a chatas? Okay, a person is obligated to bring a chatas for some sin that he did. And he and he and he sticks his hand into his pouch and says, "Okay, this money over here is the money I'm going to use to buy a chatas. Elu lechatas. This money is is going to be brought for a chatas. Okay, shavin shamos And he so, so what happens is he goes to the to the shuk and and he and he finds a he finds a korban korban great animal, and uh, and he's got change left over. So now even Beis Hillel is going to agree that whatever's left over must be donated to the temple. Why? Because he said this is for a chattas. Um, and, and we'll see in, in tomorrow's Mishnah you know, what's the difference between the two different cases. Sha'abi um, mehin lechattas. However, if he picked up his coin and says, okay, I'm going to use this money, uh, I'm going to use some of this money to, um, for my chattas, Sha'abin shamos hafulin, then, then both Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai agree. That uh, that whatever change is left over is full in, and he's under no obligation to donate it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we'll see tomorrow in Mishnah Dalad um, what's the difference between uh, between the machatzis shekel and the chatas in these cases. Good. Yeah. Safin. Pesach Dalad. If the Pesach was offered in a state of contamination, zavim zavos menstruates. Uh, or women after childbirth may not eat of it. But if they did eat, they are exempt from the penalty of the Kairos. Rav Eliezer exempts them, even from the Kairos due for entering the temple. What are the differences? Oh, sorry. Okay. What are the differences between the Pesach offered in Egypt and the Pesach offering of succeeding generations? The purchase of an Egyptian Pesach was on the 10th of Nisan. It required sprinkling of its blood with a bundle of hyssop 
upon the lintel and upon the two doorposts and was eaten in haste during one, uh, during one night, but the Pesach is of exceeding generations is reserved all seven days. Did you catch it, that, that one night is that the Chag of Pesach in Mitzrayim was only one night. Hmm. After, after that, there was no, you know, they could eat, they could eat bread the next day. Uh, yeah, hmm. So they, they, they only had a, a one day festival. But for the rest of the time, it's uh, as we it's as we have it. Okay. That's good, Lawrence. What good start? Right, Egypt is good, Lawrence. Well, Egypt is good start. Yeah, but so you're saying I should have had two days yomtiv. Right. <laughs> okay, we, we're saying we have seven days yomtiv, and in that time there was only one. Right, right, right. So the, the people in in America shouldn't complain. Well, they should yeah. complain. Right, right. <laughs> Said Rabbi Yeshua, I have heard that the substitute of a Pesach was offered and that the substitute of a Pesach is not offered, but I cannot explain it. Said Rabbi Akiva, I will explain. If the original Pesach offering was found before the slaughtering of the substitute Pesach, it must be left to pasture until it develops a mum. It is then sold and a Pesach offering is brought with its proceeds. And so is the rule regarding the substitute. But if it was found after the slaughtering of the substitute Pesach, it is offered as a peace offering and so is the rule regarding its substitute. If someone designates yes. a female, that was it. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Okay. All right. Okay. Erevin. In space. Just trying to think about what you said before. Yeah. So if a Jew, I don't I think I have this wrong. If a Jew was in 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 the trium at the time that this was only one day he's allowed to eat bread um <clears throat> on the yeah uh, they, they only ate mat they only ate matzah in mitzrayim on the first night the next day they were on the road um I, so i don't know if you're until... talking about when they left you're talking about when they left yes Oh, I was thinking that this was a continuation. I mean, no, there were no Jews left. I mean, there were probably Jews left, but the, the Arab Robert, the day uh, uh, I was thinking that the Jews were still there. You know, there were some Jews there or something, and they were observing this, but, you know. No, 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 no. We're talking about the, 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 right, right. the one that we that we were talking about. Right, okay, I'm sorry. I had it that mixed up. Okay. All right. Um, if a large roof is, uh, this is a uh, test base. If yeah. a large roof is adjacent to a small one, the large one is permitted, but the small one is prohibited. If a large courtyard was breached into a small one, the large one is permitted and the small one is prohibited because it is like the entrance of the large one. If a courtyard was breached into a public domain, one who brings from there into a private domain or from a private into it is liable. These are the words of Rabbi Eliezer. But the Kakumans say from it, into the, from, from it into the public domain or from the public domain into it, it is not liable because it is like a Carmelist. If a courtyard was breached into a public domain on two of its sides, or if a house was breached on two of its sides, or an alley whose cross beams or poles were removed, they are permitted on the Sabbath, but prohibited in the future. These are the words of Rabbi, um, Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yossi says they are permitted, if they are permitted on that Sabbath, they are permitted in the future, and they are prohibited in the future, they are prohibited on that Sabbath. Okay. One more. The Dalit as well, yeah. My fault. A second story built upon two houses or bridges under which a road passes, one may carry beneath them on the Sabbath. These are the words of Rebbe Yehuda, but the common prohibit. Rebbe Yehuda also said, we may make an error for an open alley, but the common prohibit. Okay. We have Orla. Orla. If articles were oiled with unclean oil, and were oiled again with clean oil, or if they were oiled with clean oil and then oiled again with unclean oil, if Eliezer says, I go after the first, and then come and say, after the last. If leaven of chuma and of kilay hakairam would fell into dough, and neither this suffices to leaven nor that suffices to leaven, but together they leaven, it's forbidden to non-priests but permitted to priests. Rabbi Shimon permits to not priest and to priest. Remember the, the difference over here is that Rabbi Shimon's basic uh, thing is that if you have two different types, two different categories of Islam, um, even though they're both usher to you, 
and but but they both got a chazi shear. So the, so this one doesn't have enough to to make it asur, and that one doesn't have to make have enough to make it asur. But together they would have enough to make it asur. So the mainstream view is that okay, but you've got a you've got a shear of isur. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Shimon says no. You've got half a shear of isur A, half a shear of isur B. Neither of them is enough, and you can't join them together. Okay. And 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 we, and we bring the example of an isur which is only asur to uh, to non koanim, but to koanim trauma is okay. So right. to the koanim, the mainstream view is that well, it's mutter for them, so they can so they're allowed to eat it, but the Israel can't. Okay, all right. Um, that was it. Condiments of truma and kalayla akaram fell into a pot, and neither these suffice to flavor, nor those suffice to flavor, but together they flavored. It is forbidden to non priests, but permitted to priests. And Reb Shimon permits to non priest and to priest. Again, because you've got two different categories of this, sir. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Last well, one. The milk of a woman will cease, um, will cease. The milk of a woman will cause susceptibility to tumor, whether its emergent is to one's satisfaction or is not to one's satisfaction. So the milk of an animal will only cause susceptibility to tumor if its if its emergence is to one's satisfaction. Rabbi Akiva said the matic the matic can be proven through a cal a coma. If the milk of a woman, which is tended only for children, will cause susceptibility to tumor, whether its emergence was to one's satisfaction or was not to one's satisfaction, then animal milk, which is intended for both children and adults, is not is it not logical that it should cause susceptibility to tumor? regardless of whether its emergence was to one satisfaction or was not to one satisfaction? So the comment said to him, not so. For the milk of a woman that did not emerge to one satisfaction generates susceptibility up to tumor. It is because the blood of her wound causes susceptibility to tumor. With the milk of an animal that did not emerge to one satisfaction, likewise generates susceptibility to tumor. When the blood of its wound does not cause susceptibility to tumor, Rabbi Kiva said to them, I am more stringent regarding milk than I am regarding blood. For if one expresses milk for therapeutic reasons, the milk will cause susceptibility to tumor. But if one lets blood for therapeutic reasons, the blood will not cause susceptibility to tumor. The sages say to Rabbi Akiva, the law concerning baskets of olives or grapes will serve as a proof. For if liquids ooze from the baskets to the owner's satisfaction, they will cause susceptibility to tumor, but if liquids ooze not to his satisfaction, they will not cause susceptibility to tumor. He said to them, not so. If you say thus concerning baskets of olives and grapes, it is because in the beginning, the fruits were a food, and in the end, the liquid that oozes is a beverage. Will you say the same concerning milk, the beginning and the end of which was a beverage? Until this point, what, uh, until this point was the response. Rabbi Shimon said, from here on, we will answer in his presence as follows. Rainwater will serve as a proof since in the beginning and in the end it is a beverage, and yet it does not cause susceptibility to tumor unless it emerged to one's satisfaction. He said to us, not so. If you say thus concerning rainwater, it is because the majority of rainwater is not for the benefit of people, but for the benefit of land and trees, and the majority of milk is for the benefit of the people. I don't know, that's not, that's not, not sure. Hey, Zadim. Two Mishnahs from the beginning of Zabim. Beis Shammai, say. Oh, Beis Shammai, Beis Shammai. Oh, you're right, you're right, so carry on. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I, I skipped the page, I'm sorry. Regarding someone who had one Zav omission, Reb Shammai says, he is like a woman who observes a day, free of uterine discharges, corresponding to the day on which she experienced a uterine discharge. But, Basila says he is like someone who had a, a seminal emission. If he had one Zav emission and on the second day he stopped, and on the third day he had two emissions or one emission, that is as lengthy as two. But Shammai says he is a full Zav, but Behil says he conveys Truma to couches and seats and requires immersion in a spring, but is exempt from an offering. If Elas of Yehuda said Be Shammai agree in Be, say Be Shammai agree in this case that he is not a full Zav. And regarding what to do with they disagree, regarding someone has two Zav emissions or one admission that is as lengthy as two, 
And on the second day, he stopped. And on the third day, he had one admission in which Beit Shammai say he is a full Zav. But by Hill says he can bathe too much of couches and seats and requires immersion in the spring, but he's exempt from an offering. Regarding someone who has a seminal admission on the third day of a Zav count, Beit Shammai says he forfeits the two preceding days. And Beit Hill says he is forfeited only that day. Reb Yishmael says one who has a seminal admission on the second day of the Zav count forfeits the preceding day. Rabbi Akiva says both someone who has a seminal admission on the second day and someone who has a seminal admission on the third day. Peshama says that he has forfeited the two preceding days and Basil says that he has forfeited only one day. And they agree in a case where he has a seminal admission on the fourth day that he has forfeited only that day, but only when he has the admission of Simi. If he had a Zav admission, even on the seventh day, he has forfeited all the preceding days. Right. We're going to um Arachin? Right, not tomorrow. Okay. Arachin and then what we'll do one of tomorrow. Okay. We have uh test bulb. A city whose roof constitutes its wall. No, it's test sign. With test sign? Oh. oh, I have it there. Okay. Um the houses of the open towns are recorded at the advantages of the houses of walled cities and the advantages of fields. They may be redeemed immediately and they may be redeemed for the entire 12 months like houses and they go out in Yovo and with the ded deduction of money like fields. These are the houses of open towns. Two courtyards consisting of two houses each. Even if they are surrounded by a wall from the time of, time of Yeshua ben Nun, they are judged as houses of open towns. If a Yisrael inherits from his maternal grandfather a, a, a levy, he does not redeem uh, according to this order. And so too, if a levy inherited from his maternal grandfather a Yisrael, he does not redeem according to this order. As it is said, for the houses of the cities of the Levium, unless he is both a levy, a levy and the cases of the Levium, there is other words of Reb, Reb, Rebbe. That's the common, however, say these matters were stated only concerning the cities of Levium. We may not make a field into a clearing, nor a clearing into a field, nor a clearing into a city, nor a city into a clearing. And Rip Eliezer says, to what does this apply? To the cities of the Levian. Carry on. I'll have to go to- I haven't uh, finished. That was the last one for me, I think. No, no, the, the, you haven't finished reading that mission. Oh, you're so strict. Okay, all right. <laughs> to, I'm sorry, to the cities of the Levian. But in cities belonging to Yisrael, and we may make a field into a clearing, but not a clearing into a field. And we may make a clearing into a city, but not a city into a clearing, lest they destroy the cities of Yisrael. The Kohanim and the Levium may sell at any time and redeem at any time, as it is said, the Levium shall have an internal right of redemption. Okay, and one Mishnah from tomorrow. All people can make tamura, both men and women. This is not to say that one is permitted to perform a tamura act, rather that if he did perform a tamura act, it is effective and he receives 40 lashes. Kohanim can make a tamura with offering of their own, and Yisrael can make a tamura with offerings of their own. However, Kohanim cannot make a tamura with an akatas, with an asham, or with a bechor. The Yabeokan Avinori says, why, but why can the Kohanim not make a tamura with a bechor? The Rebekiva says to him, a katos and an asham are gifts to the Kohen, and a Bakor is a gift to the Kohen. Just like the Kohen cannot offer a Tamura with a katos or an asham, should so too he should not be able to make a Tamura with a Bakor. Yabi Yokada ben Nori said to him, Rabbi Akiva, what difference does it make to me that the Kohen cannot make a Tamura with a katos or asham, in which the Kohen receives no rights during the animal's lifetime? Will you say the same with regard to a Bakura in which the Kohanim do receive rights during its lifetime? Because the, the Kohanim only received the, the Fantas of the Asham once it's been shifted and it's, and it's meat. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, Rabbi uh, Kiva said to him, but it has already been stated, then it and its substitute shall be holy. Where did sanctity devolve, uh, devolve upon the original sacrifice? In the owner's house. So too, a Tamura act is effective only when the original offering is in the owner's house. Okay. And Kiddushin.
in Uzayin. If a man said, I gave my daughter in Kedushin, but I do not know to whom I gave her in Kedushin, the one and one came and said, I betrothed her, he is believed. And if this one said, I betrothed her, and this one said, I betrothed her, they both give a get. If they want, one gives a get and one marries. If a man said, I gave my daughter in Kedushin, or I gave her, in, or I gave her in Kedushin and accepted her divorce when she was a minor, she is a minor and is believed. If he said, I gave her in Kedushin and accepted her divorce when she was a minor, and she is an adult, she is not believed. If, if he said she was abducted and I ransomed her, whether she was a minor or an adult, she's not believed. One who said at the time of his death, I have sons, is believed. If he said, I have brothers, he is not believed. So what does it mean? What does it mean, I have sons, I have brothers? The Lapkamina is for, for Yibum. Right, right, right. But if he says, I have, I have sons, then he's saying, basically, my wife doesn't need Yibum. If he's saying, I have brothers, and he doesn't have children, then he's saying, my wife does need Yibum. So we don't we don't believe him to uh, when, he, when, he, when he says that because at the moment his wife is in the chazaka of not eating yibum, so he can't he can't take her out of that chazaka unless we have clear knowledge. If one gives his daughter a kedushin without specification, the begaros are not included. If one has two groups of daughters from two wives, and he said, "I gave my elder daughter a kedushin, and I do not know if it was the elder one of the elder of the older ones or the elder of the younger ones, or the younger of the older ones." And, one who is older than this elder of the younger ones. They are all prohibited, prohibited except the youngest, younger of the youngest ones. These are the words of Rev Mayer. Rev Yossi says they are all permitted except for the elder of the older ones. If he said, I gave my younger daughter in Kedushin and do not know if it was the younger of the all younger ones or the younger of the older ones or the elder of the younger ones who was younger than the younger of the older ones, they are all prohibited except for the elder of the older ones. These are the words of Rev Mayer. But Yossi says they are all permitted except the younger of the younger ones. If that's, one's kind of, that's it? Okay. Yeah. I wanted to answer because I wanted, I wanted to see, uh, I don't remember the sentence you gave me when it came to commas, something about eating. Let's grandma. eat grandma. Right, let's eat grandma or. Let's eat grandma. It's just it's the way you say it. It's Do you the, have the comma? Do you have the comma after the eat? Right. Let's eat, Grandma, or let's eat, Grandma. Yes. Right. Okay. Tell my kids and see if they get it. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. I do. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a great Good day. day. It's a sham. See you tomorrow. Are you going early? You don't know yet. Um, if you can be ready earlier, that'll be great. I'll try. I'll try to be early. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.